There are some of the newest and strongest graphics cards coming out left and right, but has anyone taken a second to think, how are the older cards holding up? First of all, we need to define the term old graphics card. I think we all know that in the GPU space, there is such a thing as too old. So graphics cards such as the GT710 or the GT1030 will be completely excluded because they cannot run any newer games at any reasonable amount of frames per second. We took the strongest and weakest card from each of the last 5 generations of NVIDIA cards to see exactly which cards are still a strong choice in your budget system. First, we have the 780 Ti and the 750 Ti. Both these cards can still be found today, and it's for a good reason. The 780 Ti was released in 2013 and scores a 3854 in Time Spy with only 3GB of GDDR5 VRAM. Not only is this an extremely good score for a 2013 card, it actually beats the GTX 1650 which has 4 gigs of GDDR5 VRAM that was released 6 years later in 2019. What also makes this card all the more impressive is its price that hovers around $100. Good luck trying to find a 1650 for below even $200. The weaker counterpart of the 780 Ti was released a year later in 2014. The GTX 750 Ti is an example of a card that cannot pull its own weight in 2022. With a measly 1399 times by score, this is definitely a card that you want to stay away from for a variety of reasons. First off, it only has 2GB of GDDR5 VRAM, and secondly, it only costs $15 less than the 780 Ti, which it is 3 times weaker than. So let's just say, if you're planning to play anything besides Peggle on your computer, you should probably stay away from this card. The next generation of cards is where things start to get interesting. The GTX 950 and the GTX 980 Ti both came out in 2015, but almost 7 years later they're still relatively strong. It is mostly just the 980 Ti that is still useful, but the 950 would run cookie clicker pretty well. The 980 Ti was extremely impressive for its time, increasing its time spice score by 49.07% from the last generation, along with doubling its VRAM to 6GB. This was a huge step forward in graphics cards, you can even look at the comparison in the TechSpot article showing how it shapes up to graphics cards that were released 4 years later. It is no surprise that the 980 Ti is not only usable today, but still quite strong. With a time spy score of 5745 and a price below $200, this card is a must have if you're building on a budget. Moving along to the next generation, we have the GTX 1050 Ti and the GTX 1080 Ti. We do stick along with the theme of the lowest end card of the generation being extremely weak, with the 1050 Ti only having a 2504 time spy score. This is only a 23.9% increase in strength from the last generation. It would actually be less if we could find the GTX 1050, but they're really hard to get your hands on for a reasonable price, so we stuck with the Ti variant. The highest end card of this generation was really impressive. The GTX 1080 Ti was a 63.46% increase in the Time Spy score compared to the 980 Ti, released just two years before the 1080 Ti. The 1080 is still a relatively expensive card, sitting around $450, but it's still more than worth the money if you could get your hands on it. The next generation is where things get a little weird. You would think we'd be going over the RTX 2080 Ti and the RTX 2060, but the 2060 was not the weakest card released in this generation. The GTX 1650 was released in 2019, one year after the 2080 Ti was released, so it's technically the weakest card released during the 2000 series, even though it's not even RTX. The GTX 1650 is the only card in this list with GDDR5 and GDDR6 versions. It was billed as a budget card and certainly performs like one, scoring an extremely low time spy score of 3706. The RTX 2080 Ti is undoubtedly a strong card. With the introduction of 11GB of GDDR6, for the first time it scores a whopping 13,584 in time spy, and it's the first card that we've gone over with ray tracing capabilities. That does not mean this is a perfect card though. If you're looking for raw computing power in comparison with the price you're paying, the 1080 Ti is actually the better option, and we'll go over why that is later in the video. The newest generation is the RTX 3000 series, the weakest being the 3050 and the strongest being the 3090 Ti. The 3050 is a really strong GPU for its current price. At $330, it's 73.66% stronger than the 1650, which costs $210. The 3050 is definitely a step up when it comes to the worst performing card in the generation, still being usable with the most recent titles at decent FPS. Moving along to the RTX 3090 Ti, this thing is a beast, with 24GB of DDDR6X VRAM along with the 20,833 times by score, it's the strongest GPU on the market and it's not even close. But you would actually get more raw power for your money buying any other card on the market, and here's why. We divided the time spy score by the current price of the GPUs. What we get from this is how much money you paid for one point of the time spy score. So smaller number good, big number bad. The biggest number by far is the 3090 Ti, costing 10 cents per one point in time spy. If you look closely at the graph, there's a slight problem. The GTX 1050 Ti. This is by far the worst budget card you can buy for yourself. We have no idea why they're still this expensive, but stay away. Overall, the best way to find a strong card is buying the strongest GPU of an older generation and to never buy the weakest card from a generation, with the exception of the 4000 series, which we'll go over in another video.